Hello, I'm Ian Stafford and with me is Lewis Moody, the former Leicester Tigers, England and Lions star and a man who caps in his country on the way to winning 71 international caps. We'll be here throughout the Six Nations tournament providing, hopefully, some expert opinion uh, for BetSafe. And Lewis, before we get into the three matches of this weekend, mm -hmm. perhaps uh, a quick overview of the, of the tournament as a whole. England go in as uh, Six Nations Grand Slam champions. But if they do it again, it's not going to be easy. No, it won't be easy. But, but first of all, Ian, welcome to my humble abode in, uh, in Bradford-on-Avon, not Bradford in, uh, in Yorkshire, like you initially thought. Um, That's why I'm late. I'm that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I had to pick you up from the train station. But, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the tournament, I think, for any side, maintaining success, you know, when you've, when you've reached the pinnacle. So England, you know, winning the, winning the Grand Slam for the first time in, in a number of years last year, and then backing that up is, is a very difficult challenge for them. Um, you know, for Eddie Jones, they've, they've found a, a man that knows how to operate under pressure, who's got a history of success behind him. Um, and he'll be now looking to, to tinker on what Clive Woodward during, during my era called the, the one percenters and looking for those sort of marginal gains. You know, we've heard of the introduction of Cheryl Calder, who's an eye specialist. Um, try and get the eyes moving quicker. It's like a muscle in the in the body, just like any other that can be trained to to work and, and react faster. So Eddie Jones, now having built that sort of foundation, is able to chase those one percenters, which maybe some of the other teams aren't. But there's there's been a, there's been an exciting raft of, of change, I think, in Northern Hemisphere rugby. You know, it was only the Autumn Internationals uh, recently, and all of a sudden we see. A number of sides competing. You know, Ireland you know, beating New Zealand. You know, having a wonderful uh, campaign. You know, beating New Zealand for the first time in what 111 years or something like that, which is which is superb. Um, Wales, you know, Wales not quite at the at the same level as they have been in the last decade, um, but but still able to to mix it. And Scotland, of course, you know, who always during the internet the autumn international scene to do really well, and then when the Six Nations comes around, for whatever reason, seem to completely crumble. Um, France and Italy will be in there somewhere. Um, France, that complete unknown. Italy, of course, had their own win against South Africa, which, you know, back in the autumn, they'll take incredible uh, heart from now with Mike Cat and uh, um, the other chap from Harlequins, whose name has completely <laughs> come from my mind. What is Conor his name? O'Shea. Conor O'Shea, O'Shea that's it. <laughs> that's what happens. We play for 16 years, you get repeatedly hit in the head. Things sometimes uh, escape your memory. But no, so really, from, from my point of view, generally excited about the Six Nations because there are so many teams that really do have an opportunity to, to win this year. Very quickly, the Lions in the summer, does that play any factor? In the back of everybody's minds <clears throat> will be, good Six Nations, I'm on the plane to New Zealand. Yeah, of course. I think every player going into the, into the Six Nations will say, no, I'm not concentrating, only thinking about the Six Nations in England, but at the back of all of their minds. Certainly those that... Um, know they've got a sniff of going on that Lions tour. You know, it'll be an incredible Lions tour as well to New Zealand. Uh, they'll, they'll be thinking, okay, how do I get through the Six Nations without injury? Um, and, and that will plague them at times. But, you know, really they do have to just get through their, their international campaign with the home nation and then worry about that afterwards because firstly they've got to be playing well enough during that Six Nations. And there are some wonderful players around at the minute. You know, within England we see Watsons, we see the Josephs coming back into, into good form. We've got Mara Toji who, you know, might be an outside bet for possible Lions captain if he, if he performs well during this Six Nations. Cool. That was a big call. Yeah. Um, young man, sort of a la Martin Johnson back in 97. Oh. Um, and then, you know, Scotland, you've got the Hogs, the Finn Russells, you know, you've got the Grey Brothers. Um, Dave Denton, you know, not picked in the Scottish squad, but now coming back from, from injury, could, could feature. Um, Wales, Alan Wynne-Jones, Ireland, Rory Best, and, and all the backs. You know, Tommy Bow, is he, you know, having been such a great servant to Ireland, could he, could he feature? Um, Sexton, yeah, it's just, there's so many players to, to choose from. And the other thing, very quickly, uh, about this Six Nations, for the first time they're introducing bonus points. Uh, are you for that? Are you against it? Will it change the dynamic of the tournament? <clears throat> the the most enjoyable Six Nations I've watched in the recent decade was was the one was it two years ago? Two years ago, the final Saturday. Yeah. So yeah. for me, absolutely, I think because you know all of a sudden you see. I know in football they have the games all at the same time, so no one has a, an advantage. But actually, you saw with. Uh, with the way that those games were staggered one after another, that every team knew exactly what they had to do coming into the match. So it created a far more exciting 
game to watch because everyone knew what was what was to play for and all of a sudden I think the powers that be recognize that and the introduction of these bonus points makes it just even more exciting you know every team has something to play for going into those even the Italy's and the Scotland's without being you know too disrespectful who generally pull up the bottom of that pile at the end of a game there's no reason for them to stop or give up it's chasing those bonus points uh, top three I suppose it's probably best to look at the the teams that will finish in uh, that I think will finish in the top three England <coughs> Ireland and Scotland. So, outside bet, of course, with with Scotland. But in a a guy in a, in Stuart Hogg, who's been playing absolutely outstanding rugby for the last five years, he knows his way to the try line. He can create something from nothing. I think he'll be up there in the top three. Um, for Ireland, Trimble and Zebo both been going very well. But Trimble, in particular, for me, playing uh, particularly well at home. And England, you know, who I think will top the pile with uh, with tries scored, but. Um, again, in a back three, they've got the likely uh, starting three of Noel Watson and, and sorry, Noel May and, uh, and Brown. Brown probably won't trouble the, the try sheet that much, but May and Noel will. And uh, I'd probably go with Jack Noel because he's, he's hungry. He's been playing some great rugby for Exeter and he knows his way to the try line.